Hi everyone, welcome back. So I first off want to say thank you for all of the super helpful, thoughtful comments from the last video. Uh, I've tried to read as many as I possibly could and a lot of helpful tips in there from master carpenters to DIYers like me and then just general moral support from people that don't know anything about rafters themselves. So super appreciated and I am sitting at my little dog Shelly that I built. Now just a quick refresher, this gets a little bit confusing for people where I'm at all the time and I have explained this before in a video but not everyone can see every video and I don't even know which video it was in myself. So a quick refresher is I am at home. Home is where our main home is like the timber frame house, the dog house, this is where the campers are in the driveway. This is where the sawmill is, the pole barn shed, the shed down by my mill that I built. Um, this is where we have the creek that I've talked about in videos before. So home base is where I'm at currently. This is the 10 acres of land. And then where I'm building the cabin on the cliff is at our off-grid property, which is 20 acres. We have also that cabin down by the water that has been in some videos before. And that is about an hour and a half's drive away from this home. At this time of year, if I go out in the winter and drive, I have to go a different way. And of course there's snow and it's about two hours drive. So I'm home, I'm at the doghouse, And in trying to figure out what I was doing wrong with those rafter bird's mouths before I came back here and because more or less, I'm honestly, I guess in a way that cabin build is, and it is a larger version of this little dog chalet. And when I came and I looked, I kind of really realized how I was doing those bird's mouth cuts before. And it's not a way that I've even ever seen on, on YouTube. I really didn't know anything about bird's mouth cuts. And I don't think I even looked it up online back then. I just tried to figure it out. I held the rafter up and thought about some things and made it work. But I didn't actually do the same thing in the same way that I was doing out at the cliff. So with that, I'm going to take what I have did here, what I've learned from all of the comments, and I still think that what I was doing in theory should have worked. I think somewhere in that process, I made a couple little mistakes, whether it's because I couldn't hold the board properly. Somewhere along the line, I made a little mistake. I still think that that theory should work. So I'm going to take all of that information and when I go out there in the next couple of days, I'm going to break that down for myself and for those of you that care, that some people really want to know how I made the mistake and how I'm fixing it and maybe other tips and tricks. So we'll talk rafters and bird's mouth cuts out at the cliff. Um, what else is I going to say? Regardless. Okay, that was the other thing. I did three rafters, one of which the board is super twisted. I'm not going to use that one anyway. So of the two that I'm going to keep that I used where they're overcut on the plum, the plum cuts to the outside wall, I think it was rather fortuitous because honestly, after I've thought about it, I'm going to be adding boards onto the outside walls over to where the rafters are coming down, like either five eighths of an inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick for the wall boards. So that extra gap will work in my favor. So those are totally usable. However, I still have decided to mill some more rafters. So, so let's get into that. Let's get down to milling some wood at the sawmill. to go to all the trouble to go all the way up and get the bobcat to lift the log at least one of them or do I just want to like muscle it over I'm gonna muscle it over it's like carrying groceries in from the truck to the house am I gonna make three trips or am I gonna like take all the bags that I can and do one trip I'm a one trip kind of gal 
tell this is cedar, it's not that heavy. I just feel like explaining all these things like all the thoughts that go through my head or the things that I have to think about when I'm trying to make a decision about something so I have this pile of cedar over there <clears throat> to do these rafters that I'm gonna do so whether I say this now or later I'm not sure at what point I'm gonna say but regardless of the problems that I'm having with the birds mouths one thing that I noticed when I was out there and I thought about <clears throat> was that for each gable end, those two rafters that close in the cabin, I want them to be like the same dimension, more or less, as the rest of the timber frame because I'm not closing the walls in from the inside. So that to me, like I am going to put a couple of little windows up at the front there in the gable end. The back window is already framed in with the timbers and so in order for it to really look good and to feel like a proper, in my opinion, to feel like a proper timber frame in, in the way that it looks is to mill up some rafters that are like timbers. They need to be five inches by the rest of the rafters are about five and a half to shrunk down to five and a quarter and I'm going to get one out of these maybe I might try and get some some other lumber out of here too some wall boards or something I don't really know Here's one of the rafters. <laughs> it's worth it, right? It'll be interesting. Right, up like that. It'll be good. Like these pieces of cedar, these really nice, good bits, like that's what I used for the or the, the shed there you know so this stuff comes in handy some of its firewood and some of its like in the keep pile for something So this is another blade that I sharpened with the sharpener and set with the tooth setter. I think I noticed something. So last night I had sparks coming off of the blade and what I just noticed, and I don't know how it happened, but uh, this whole thing here is a little bit twisted like that. And so I think that was enough to kind of cause the teeth, the offset teeth to hit and make sparks, I think. It's the only thing I can think of. So I've never had that before. So I will adjust this. I 
I have a feeling I'll need to tighten this belt. Sometimes there's a pop. In case anyone cares, it's 25 foot pounds. I know some people uh, stray from that and make up their own numbers. I have always had good luck with 25 foot pounds torque. quite thrilled about all of this stuff. I'm already like, ooh, what is the next thing I'm gonna build? Like woodshed, outhouse, perfect for siding. And then I was just thinking on this last cut, I could do a gable end or two, similar to how I did that shed with this stuff. Um, or it could be part of the siding. Kind of have a couple ideas about how I could do that. So I'm going to take this stuff out as well. I pretty much have decided that every time I go out there, like that's why I took those pallets out and I'm going to set them up that, you know, hopefully maybe this weekend I'll set those pallets up so that every time I come out, I'm going to bring a little bit more material each time I go out. And even though if I can't launch it right away, I'll store it there for now. And then it's out there. And that's like I said, half the battle done. Yeah, and I've got a couple of these guys. So this is one of the things that I'll probably use as a trial rafter. Uh, and then also what it's good for, and this one doesn't have quite as an steep of an angle, with the live edge, but I've used these before for the blocking in between the rafters. And because it's already got the beveled edge on it, it uh, kind of slides in nicely. So I could always use it for that afterwards too. A little bit heavy, light considering, but okay, there we have it. More rafters, yay. And then I'll show you inside here. So this is the inside 
of the little uh, dog chalet and as you can see it's um, quite similar to how I did the other one. I did do a little bit of lap joins. So this is like three by three cedar. I did lap join um, just because I felt like I had the time and the patience at the time for the cabin on the cliff. I've talked about why I didn't and it was really just for the sake of efficiency. But yeah, I mean, it's super cute. This whole thing is made out of cedar. It's for this reason that I've decided to mill up four rafters for each gable end. And I remember like thinking about when I did this doghouse and I put this window, these windows in the front. See, this is all three by three timber frame. And then when I went to go put this window in and frame it against this rafter, I had like a one and a half inch rafter, but I also had a three inch timber. And so I had to kind of really just scrap together this whole piece to frame it in because it was thicker, right? So it doesn't really matter as much in the back because I already have that one window framed out with the timbers, but for the front, I am going to put windows up there because I'm going to put a sleeping loft there and I want to lay out and look out at the lake. So I'm going to put windows up there and I was thinking ahead to if I'm going to frame those windows in, I don't want to run into this problem again. Also, this doghouse like never gets used. The dogs do not use it. And I think it is so stinking cute. Look at how cute it is. I think I'm going to have to do an overnighter myself. everything like for me to go out there it has to be when Steve is home like not at work so that he can stay with the dogs because I can't take all the dogs out there with me so it's kind of I gotta try to help him as much as I can today which we've been working on camper things um, before I head out tomorrow and I potentially might stay the night on the cliff uh, just to take the opportunity for the extra time I'll see how Steve feels about that, but 